Good afternoon. Uh, so, you know, I mean, when I first uh, got the whole uh, theme for the, you know, conference, Design for Change, I was like, what? I mean, every design is supposed to be for change, you know? Otherwise, why would you design? And I'm like, something doesn't make sense. So let's get a little academic. So I was like, uh, let's go to the Bible, which is Google. Yeah. And, uh, see what that has to say. So I typed design in Google, and it said something like design is the creation of a plan or convention for the construction of an object or a system. Mm, kind of makes sense. I, I don't know how much, but does make some sense. Then I typed change. And most interestingly, the first thing with change, you guys can check, comes this change.org website. And this, this, this told me something about the direction our society is heading, you know, activism is becoming the norm of the day. So, you know, it's a, an activist uh, society, uh, website, and basically about petitioning and all. And then second was a kind of, I don't know if it's supposed to be a definition, but it said change may refer to the process of becoming different. I'm like, all right, <laughs> we, are, we are getting somewhere, I guess. Then I, again, you know, continued in the Bible and tried to see what some wise men, you know, I mean, what wise men have to say about change. If you don't like something, change it. It comes from the, the whole Steve manifesto and I think they took it from Maya Angelou or something. The common. Then uh, we cannot change anything until we accept it. I'm like, okay. You must be the change you wish to see in the world. Gandhi never said it, but it's widely attributed to Gandhi. But, you know, so let's take it as something by Gandhi. And I'm like, uh, what are all these talking about? True change takes place in imagination. And imagination is fueled by perception. Then somebody said 90% of error in thinking is due to error in perception. <laughs> then all change is not growth, as all movement is not forward. And uh, finally, it is most interesting, the more things change, the more they are the same. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, all right, <laughs> this whole business of change is confusing. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just, uh, uh, <laughs> what do you make of it? Uh, and so I was like, all right, enough of, um, you know, I mean, academic exercises. Let me just kind of dig inwards and see how can you know, I relate to the whole idea and everything. So a little bit of focus on design. So this, uh, this, this is something that I have uh, seen somewhere and I really like it. You know, I mean, uh, first thing when I, I asked some of my coworkers, you know, I mean, and uh, we struggle with the whole design aspect of things a lot. And uh, everybody's simplicity somehow becomes a big thing in every design and all. And uh, this uh, poster on, you know, simplicity came to my mind. It says the simplest solutions are often the cleverest. They are also usually wrong. And uh, I was like, all right, now this is getting somewhere. And uh, then I came to the, you know, looking inside. So I was like, who am I? I mean, in this context, design for change, you know, what am I, what am I doing? You know, what's going on inside me? And uh, I realized that uh, I would like to be thought of, or I would like to think of myself as a change agent on a quest to design simple and clever solutions. And guess what? They are most often, it's not most often, always wrong. Like practically every single thing that I have designed in my life has been wrong. And I'm not kidding at all. So I was a little kid uh, born in a village in Bihar and uh, I didn't like anything there. My parents sent me to a boarding school very early in life. And uh, I would come home and I would see things and I was like, what the heck is going on? You know, why is the road like this? There's water on the road, no electricity, no teachers and this and that. Why don't you people do this? Why don't you people do that? And everybody would tell me, any idea I would come up with, they would tell me, no, 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 you're wrong. This doesn't work that way. And I'm like, OK, I'm wrong. So, the, you know, and uh, doing things, you know, becoming an engineer, you know, I mean, uh, started working and all that. This, this whole thing was there that I want to do something right, you know, I mean, for the village, for where I come from, because that's where I have been proven always wrong. 
So as I started working, as I started making some money, I was like, all right, let's, uh, let's get working on uh, trying to be right. And, uh, you know, I'm an electrical and electronics engineer, you know, in the power semiconductor industry. So electricity kind of becomes the obvious choice of something to work on. And uh, in 2001, I probably did the wrongest thing. In, as I started working, you know, I mean, in that direction of bringing electricity to villages and all, I thought uh, the solution must lie in something, you know, some cutting edge technology. You know, I'm sitting in the semiconductor industry in the most high tech of, you know, things out there. And so I, I should start with something like that. And I started with uh, doing research on organic solar cells. I had a very good friend who had just uh, finished his PhD. And, uh, you know, we did some math together and we were like, okay, if we can get about two and a half percent efficiency, a 10 feet by 10 feet hot, you know, the whole of the roof is a solar cell, a cheap uh, spray on kind of solar cell, then that'll be enough power for the house. And the idea was very simple, and uh, we started uh, working on it. Uh, two years uh, worked on that. Uh, didn't go anywhere. Got a long story short, then thought of all kind of geothermal, micro wind, and it was a crazy pursuit. I mean, to be very frank, uh, I, I don't, the number doesn't matter, but practically everything I earned, I just threw in this, in this pursuit, trying to figure out the technology. And one after another, it took, I mean, you know, six months into it, and I would realize that, ah, oh, shoot, no, this is not right. This is wrong. So finally, you know, I mean, I got to a point where, you know, I mean, I came back, I moved back to Bihar and everything, and uh, having tried all the so-called high-tech and cutting edge, I came, because of lack of choice, I kind of went for a very low-tech solution. And... Uh, the low-tech solution worked. You know, there was uh, light in the villages. The first village uh, where that we lighted was a village called Tampuha. And, uh, you know, I felt so fortunate when I ran into that village. Because the word Tampuha, I don't know if you guys, uh, I mean, the Hindi-speaking ones would know, it means fog of darkness. So I was like, wow, this is the village we want to light first. And we did it on the Independence Day of uh, 2007 using rice husk, which is uh, for people who are, you know, who understand the agricultural aspect of life in Indian villages. Rice husk is the practically the only waste generated in villages, except for plastic. You know, other than plastic, rice husk is the only waste because it can be eaten only by donkeys and pigs. You know, and we don't use both of them. So I was like very happy. You know, I wrote a little poem, you know, that ended with the Ajadi ke chai dasko baar tam puha tam se ajad hua. I was like, wow, what a solution. You know, kept it very low tech. Kept it very, very, very manpower intensive. And the idea was, you know, a lot of people will get employed, a lot of people will participate, so the system will be very strong. And it all seemed like such a beautiful design, and I was on a roll. I was like, all right, for the first time, it's, you know, I'm being right. I'm being right. I'm being proven right. You know, it's working. You know, built a very careful design in building a team of partners. You know, I mean, me and my childhood friend, we had been kind of working on the whole thing together. Then we partnered with these other two friends who were doing business, uh, studying business in America. And... Uh, no disrespect to the white folks in the room, but uh, I, I asked my friend, I mean, uh, that get, get a white guy in the team, get a white guy in the team, it looks good. You know, I mean, having, <laughs> I mean, having, having a team of, you know, and so they created this uh, co-founding team, so as to say. And, uh, you know, very interesting strengths and interesting expectations and all kinds of opinions, thoughts and all that. I'm like, I was on the road, way going on. We won a whole bunch of business plan competitions. I was like, wow, wonderful. A lot of investors coming our way. And then we were talking, our uh, team of uh, four you know, co-founders and all. 
till that time the company was not there. We were working under the aegis of an NGO. So once the investors started approaching, you know, all right, let's make a company. And uh, so there was a big debate that uh, we were at that time in 2007-8 time frame, we were seriously big all of a sudden in the media perception and all. Fast company in 2008 said something like gave us the social entrepreneurs of the year and all. <laughs> we had some crazy citations, the greatest new idea to change the world and all kind of crazy. I mean, people were just uh, so excited about us and they were like, uh, I couldn't even comprehend it fully, you know, I mean, this whole inrush of investors and all. And so we were discussing, you know, who all to bring in, who all to reject and all that, 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 that kind of situation. And I thought, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working it out right, you know, I mean, I'm on a roll, so I was like, alright, let's do one thing. Why, why limit it to one or two? Let's get six, seven of them. Let's get, you know, let's take a little bit of money from many of them. And I, I thought, you know, I mean, God, that way not, no one would be able to push us around. You know, we'll have, we'll, we'll kind of hedge our risk in that sense. And uh, very exciting. Guess what? I mean, uh, about four, three and a half years since those, uh, since last, uh, this thing. Today, each of these things, I realized, were huge, huge, huge mistakes. And, uh, I mean, they were so wrong, the design was so, so, so wrong. And today my biggest focus in the professional life, which is all I have, I don't have a personal life, is uh, to undo all of these. To add a lot of technology in our systems so that we can manage. In just about five years, we have become a huge organization of 512 heads to feed, you know, big overhead. All kind of random thought processes at the top, people who are involved, not involved, all kind of investors, everybody with their own opinions, their own ideas, it's a classic mess. So all of these things that work, literally my entire focus is on basically fixing them. You know, so bringing in a lot of technology into our supposedly low-tech system, so that we could manage everything, you know, people are good. When you are saying about people from here, you know, you go deal with people in a crowd, they're not that good. You know, I mean, people are people. Everybody has their own, uh, you know, ideas about being corrupt, being bad, being this, being that. Trying to cut down people. <coughs> What seemed like a super great idea, and that's what we will present in business plan competitions. I will tell like these Chip and Manoj, my partners in America who were presenting it there, that emphasize, emphasize, every plant employs four people and this and that, and this. we had this whole uh, circle made and how all that, you know, and the whole calculations that uh, how, you know, one rupee invested uh, translates directly into the impact of uh, this 23 point whatever rupee and God knows, I mean, crazy numbers and all. And today, like, I'm literally working on cutting that four people per plan to just one person. One is more than enough. One is, I am trying to think of a way I could do it with zero person. The partners and all, you know, I mean, the things, all kinds of opinions, somebody is staying in. America, you know, difference in passions, difference in ideas and all, you know, and just uh, hogging a spot in the board seat, in the board and everything, and you know, and it just becomes a mess. How do you get rid of it? The guy played a seriously good role, you know, I mean, when you were on the role, you know, that guy, you know, how do you get him out? A serious challenge. Same with investors. A bunch of jokers sitting in New York. You know, sitting in the Zurich and you know, coming up with all kind of random thing. I mean, suddenly some investor will, you know, just uh, decide to join a board meeting as an observer or something. And uh, you know, you're talking to the guy in like uh, 12 months, and suddenly you go, oh, how, how is this and that? And I'm like, what? How come you are doing solar? Like, what the heck, where were you? We've been talking about it for two years. You know, so, so all, all of those. 
And uh, same realization. Everything that I have designed has been wrong. But being wrong all the while, what my designs have done is they have given electricity to more than 300,000 people. They have given employment to 512 people. You know, they have given hope to a lot of other people. I mean, we were, and this is where I would be deviating a little bit from the prescription for speakers. I would like to boast a little bit. But we were literally the first ones to create a wave of, you know, entrepreneurship in basically in the energy space through microgrid and all that kind of approach. You know, where, I mean, before us, the biggest thing was solar lanterns. Electricity was not the concept. And there's a ton of, so this is the power of a wrong design. You know, this is, this is the power of a wrong design, a design that has been true and true wrong at every, at most of the steps. You can still get this kind of impact. Uh, so what I'm learning is uh, every solution has very limited validity. There is no solution forever, there is no solution for all good, there is no design for all good, there's none of that, that's bullshit. It's very momentary, it's very time bound, it's very temporal in nature. Technology may change behaviors, guys. Technology may change behaviors in ways, things that are not written there, in ways that you can't comprehend. And the good design or a bad design is needed because it pushes you to get to the level of comprehending how it may change the behavior and create some, you know, some basically steps so that uh, you could check the wrong this thing. I'll give you an example. So, you know, we created a prepaid meter. And we were very happy, world's cheapest prepaid meter and this and that. And uh, people, you know, so two things. We, we would have cases of electricity theft, but our thing of electricity theft was, we would, uh, one thing that I would talk about in you know, conferences and all, is that, oh, in our case, people don't basically tap into the distribution wire. You know, they just overuse. You know, they just so if we can figure out a good limiting system, then it will be really cool. So we designed the prepaid meter. And that's a very serious limiting system, you know, that will let you use a certain amount of power for a certain period of time and all that. Are great. I mean, the engineer in me was happy. You know, and the cost was less than $5, something like that. So crazy cheap, you know, system. We put them there. Guess what? People change their behavior. They started now tapping in the distribution. <laughs> So the design has to foresee that and then so to break that we started putting, okay, so the supply will be non-standard, no more 230 volt supply, the supply will be 440 volt. And the meter will have a device to kind of bring the lower the thing down and they have found a cure for that as well, but <laughs> we'll not go into that. So technology may change behavior in ways that you may not expect. Human beings change and don't tell. Seriously. This is, this is very serious. You know, the best of your workers <laughs> would suddenly have this whole different expectation. Devil in details and details have to be experienced. They cannot be thought of. They cannot be guessed. They have to be experienced. Appreciation is no method of acceptance. Being an entrepreneur, sales is. Know it very well. It's very easy to say a great idea. Till you sell it, there's nothing great about it. Thank you.